This is a guide on how to host your own 7 days to die rebirth dedicated server with Steam CMD on a Windows machine. You will need to own the game with your Steam account since this will require you to log in with your Steam account to make a dedicated server and update the server when patches roll out. First off, download Steam CMD. If you haven't already on the machine, you will be hosting your server. So simply just open up a browser and just type in Steam CMD downloads and make sure it's on this one. Go to Steam CMD, Web Developer Community. Click on Windows, click on the links to download the files. Extract it somewhere where you can find it easily. Make a new folder in your C drive. 7 days to die rebirth 1.3 launch command prompt as admin navigate to the steam cmd directory with cd c colon backslash steam cmd run the following command to download the server files i'll go ahead and put the command lines down in the description below so you can copy and paste them and this is the command you'll put in just make sure that you change out the steam account name to your steam account name and i'm just gonna kind of go over what these commands do so the steam cmd.exe will launch the steam cmd the tool that interacts with steam server to download game files the plus login logs into steam with your account replace steam account name with your actual steam username You'll be prompted for your password and possibly a Steam Guard code. The plus force install directory with the C colon backslash seven days to die rebirth 1.3 sets the installation folder for the game files. In this case, it's C colon backslash seven days to die rebirth 1.3. This keeps the beta version separate from other game versions. The plus app update to 94420 downloads or updates the game with the steam app id seven days to die the slash beta version 1.3 specifies the beta branch version 1.3 ensuring you get the rebirths mod beta version instead of the stable release the validate checks the downloaded files for errors or missing data ensure a complete and correct installation the plus quit closes Steam CMD after the process is complete. Locate server file settings, navigate to your C drive, and the new folder that you just created, 7 days to die, rebirth 1.3. Find the server config.xml file and open with a text editor. In this video, I'll be using Notepad. It's a little messy, but you gotta do what you gotta do. As always, I always recommend making a backup of your server configs in case you break something. So just copy and paste that regular defaulted one and just paste it somewhere in the same folder. Edit the server name and the server password. The region will make sure it is your preferred location. Make sure your server visibility is set to two, otherwise it will not show up in the server list. I also had to disable easy anti-cheat because it kept blocking the mods from loading on my game client. I also recommend doing this as well, so you don't run into any issues. This will ensure all mods loaded up correctly. Control plus S to save your changes once you have read through all the things you wanted to change. And these are very important ports that you will need to forward. These are the port ranges that you'll need to forward. It is 26900 through 26903 meaning you'll need a port forward 26900, 26901, 26902, and 26903. Now you'll need to download the Rebirth mod from Ferris Ramsey's Discord channel. Refer to my video on where you can download the mod. Once you have it downloaded, make sure you have make sure the mods folder in your 7 days to die rebirth 1.3 directory exists and extract all the rebirth mods in there. All players connecting to the server must install the Rebirth mod on their game client. Just make sure you check out my video I referred to earlier on reinstalling the Rebirth mod version 1.3. Alright, now running the server, all you have to do is navigate to the 7 days of die dedicated server you just made 
and double click on the batch file already created for you to start the server. If Windows Firewall pops up, make sure you allow the app. It will take a bit for it all to load up. Usually it takes about a good three to five minutes depending on how beefy your machine is. Make sure on the top of where it says loading, it says ready. That means the server is ready for everyone to join. All right, for this, you're just gonna go ahead and hit join the game, of course. And then server name, I have it under Rakuza. And remember in the region part, I put mine in North America East. So if you select that and hit start search, your PC should start, or your server should show up right here. And you'll just hit connect. And we'll put in that password, so just hold on mighty well. Okay, now I have the password and I'm just gonna hit submit. And, uh-oh, invalid. Let's see, try this password. I think I typed one too many passwords. Yeah. All right, this is just for testing. Yeah. All right, it is loading up, babies. It is loading up. All righty, lads. We are cooking up in rebirth and wow, look at these severe weathers. We got Taz. It's a little crazy and hectic here, guys. <laughs> I've never started with a terrible hurricane. Oh my goodness, what an intro. <laughs> Anyways, that is how you set up your rebirth server, dedicated server on Steam CMD. It is really easy to do, and I hope you guys have the best luck, and hopefully this worked out for you. And cheers. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. Anyways, I shall see you in the next one. Comment down below what you guys want to see next for a new dedicated server for whatever game you chose. Or choosing, per se. Uh, just make sure that I do own the game. If I don't own the game, then I'm not going to do the tutorial or the guide for a dedicated server. Uh, unless you guys give me the games, then I am more than willing to set it up. Uh, just make sure you do Google it before you send me the game. Make sure you, it is possible to set up a Steam CMD server first. Well, anyways, I am going to have some fun with this. And I'll see you in the next one. All right. Cheers. Yeah, I am. I am killing. Huh?